everyone, I'm Heather Swift and welcome to my small kitchen. I can't believe it's already fall. The days seem to be getting shorter and the nights are getting cooler. So we're gonna kick off fall today with one of my family's favorite recipes, butternut squash soup. For this recipe, you're gonna need two butternut squashes and these aren't too hard to find this time of year. Almost every local grocery store carries them. They're usually with the pumpkins. You'll need an onion and one sweet potato, five carrots or two cups of baby carrots, 32 ounces of chicken broth, and heavy whipping cream. Let's cut up the butternut squash. So these can be a little tricky to cut because they have a curve and your knife won't bend with that curve. So this is how I cut up a butternut squash. First, I like to cut the top off of the butternut squash. And then I kind of take it in two sections. Wherever your butternut squash curves is where you kind of want to make the top section and the bottom section. So I like to trim the uh, tough skin on the butternut squash off just to that middle bump. And then I do that around the whole top. And then I do the same on the bottom and then just kind of go through and get any extra little skin pieces that are on there. But I find this the easiest way to kind of take it two sections for that curve. Once you have that skin off, you wanna go ahead and cut your butternut squash in half. And when you notice when you cut it in half, it's gonna kind of look a little bit like a pumpkin. You've got seeds and you've kind of got those veins in there just like a pumpkin and you actually scrape them out of the butternut squash exactly like you do a pumpkin. So I take a big spoon and I just scrape along the edges of that butternut squash until all those seeds are out and almost all of that veiny, gooey stuff is out of the middle as well. Once you have all four halves of your butternut squash, you wanna go ahead and chop it up and you can just chop it into like three sections or four sections and then just cut it into good sized squares. When you have your squares all cut up, you are going to transfer them into a Dutch oven. If you don't have a Dutch oven, you can use a turkey roaster. You could even use a cake pan and put some foil over it. But you really want some dish that can go into the oven and have a lid. Now we're going to cut up our sweet potato. And there's a few ways that you can do this. My mom prefers just to use a small paring knife and go along the whole potato, peeling the skin that way. I like to use a potato peeler for this. Uh, it's a great tool to have in your kitchen because you can also use it to peel carrots, peel potatoes, really peel anything that has a skin. So it's always kind of handy to have around. Our sweet potato is peeled, so I like to just always cut off the ends of my vegetables and kind of just toss those to the side. And then we're gonna cut the sweet potato in half. And then once again, we're just cutting it into cubes. So cut three sections on one side, turn it around and cut three more sections, and then dump it all into your Dutch oven. We're gonna move on to our one medium onion. I like to chop up the sides first. Then cut the onion in half. And then peel back that first layer of onion. Chop it in about three or four sections. And then three or four sections across the other way. and then go ahead and dump all those ingredients in that Dutch oven as well. Now it's time to chop up the carrots. And I'm actually going to a football game tonight, so I'm gonna cheat a little, and instead of peeling and cutting the five big carrots, I'm just gonna use two cups of already peeled baby carrots that I bought at the grocery store. Everything is now in our Dutch oven, and you can just see there's great colors of orange in there and it's just gonna really make that butternut squash soup just have this beautiful orange color. 
And so once it's all in there, you wanna go ahead and take that 32 ounce of chicken broth and you wanna just dump it all over everything inside that Dutch oven and just put the whole box of chicken broth in there. I like to just drizzle a little bit of olive oil over everything right after I put that chicken broth in, just to help it stay a little bit moist while you're cooking it in the oven. Now we're going to pepper and salt everything. And now this is completely to taste, but you also need to remember that you cannot take pepper and salt out, but you can always add it at the end. So your company or your family can always add more into their bowl of soup, but you don't wanna get it too peppery and too salty at this stage. So let's put the lid on this and let's get it in the oven. We're gonna put the oven at 400 degrees and it's gonna cook for one hour. Our hour is up and we are taking all the ingredients out of the oven and be careful because it's gonna be really hot and steamy when you open that lid. You just wanna go ahead and scoop all the ingredients straight into your Vitamix. If you don't have a Vitamix, a regular blender works great. I've used that before. Or you can also use one of those um, handheld milkshake soup mixers. I've also used one of those before. However, I highly recommend a Vitamix. It gets it a little creamier and smoother. So if you don't have one in your kitchen, it might be something good to start saving for, maybe asking for Christmas or your birthday. It's a really good tool to have in your kitchen. You wanna go ahead and just blend it until it's really a smooth, creamy texture. In the Vitamix, it takes about a minute. In a regular household blender, I realized it probably takes about two to three minutes. Once all the ingredients are blended in your Vitamix, I serve it straight from the Vitamix. So I take the Vitamix off the stand and pour it into each individual bowl. And then I add a little bit of heavy cream to each bowl. And I do this for a few reasons. The cream gives it a nice little extra creamy flavor. And then it also adds a few little presentation points, especially when I have company. Thanks for watching this video. If you want more recipes, please like and subscribe to our channel. If you want a detailed description of the recipe that was cooked today, please go to www.smallkitchencooking.org or click on the link below.